Well, closing arguments have been delayed in the trial of Umar Zamir. Last week, Zamir took the stand in his own defense, testifying he and his wife feared for their lives the night Constable Jeffrey Northrup and his partner, who were dressed in plain clothes, approached their vehicle in the underground parking garage below City Hall. The Crown has argued Zamir made a series of maneuvers with his vehicle that led to Northrup's death. Zamir has pleaded not guilty to first-degree murder. And for more on what the jury will soon be considering, let's bring in a criminal defense lawyer, Joseph Newberger. Uh, we always appreciate your time. Joseph, I want to start with the defense. When it comes to closing arguments, this is the opportunity uh, to leave a, a very strong, lasting impression with the jury. And as a defense lawyer, what would you say are maybe you know, the, top, the top or the top two things that uh, the defense really needs to nail down here and, and leave with the jury uh, before they uh, get sequestered uh, and deliberate? So jury closing arguments are extremely important for both sides, but the defense absolutely must lay out very clearly why Mr. Zamir is innocent. And they should start with uh, key important factors, one of which in my mind is definitely his state of mind and the surrounding circumstances as to why he was of the belief that he was under attack and his family was in danger and he needed to flee. And to zero in on the ambiguity of the evidence from the Crown as to why Mr. Zamir would have certainly a real doubt about whether these were police officers. So it is a constellation of factors that were impacting upon Mr. Zamir's mind, including his wife's testimony. I would zero in on that right away. Next, I'd go into the expert evidence of both the accident reconstruction expert for the Crown versus the defense, because you have opposing theories of how the maneuvering occurred and the striking of uh, Constable Northrop. This is very important as well, because this will raise a, at least a reasonable doubt in the mind of the jury, in my opinion, as to how the actual contact occurred between Mr. Zamir's driving and with Constable Northrop. Those are two very important factors in my mind and also, uh, along with that, he will integrate uh, some of the law and bring the jury along in understanding why this is not an intentional killing uh, of a police officer. Of course, he didn't know it was a police officer. He didn't intend to harm anybody. And lay that out in very thick format, mm -hmm. in a very methodical way, to get to that jury so they understand exactly what the defense position is. And throughout this trial, one thing uh, for sure is there's been a lot of consistency in the story of uh, Umar Zamir uh, that he, you know, maintained. Uh, he, he didn't know that these were police officers, that they were in plain clothes. Uh, and, and he's also expressed a, a great deal of remorse uh, towards the family of uh, Constable Northrop and what happened here. And when it comes to when you talk about doubt and reasonable doubt, I mean, how difficult is it going to be uh, for the Crown to prove that, that this was uh, intentional? I, I think it's extremely difficult for the Crown with the facts that we have in this case. There was evidence that was brought in by uh, at least one or two officers who dealt with Mr. Zamir right upon his arrest. There was spontaneous utterances of him not knowing these were police officers and wanting to flee and obviously being in a state of confusion and fear. That's important. And um, his apologies are extremely important because this is clearly a very significant tragedy. We have the death of an officer, a veteran officer who was in pursuit of what he thought was a suspect. Police officers are very vulnerable when, when in their duty. And his expressing appropriate remorse for his actions that resulted in his death. But not saying that I intentionally did it, but it was an accident and I'm extremely sorry about this. Because sometimes in life, there's a constellation of facts that come together where tragic things happen, but it doesn't mean it's criminal. And I think the Crown has a very significant hurdle in establishing first degree murder. I think the only thing that's at play here is manslaughter or an outright acquittal. And, and I, I think based on the evidence thus far, it's leaning towards an acquittal, but you never know what a jury will do. And of course, we weren't listening to every piece of evidence as the jury was. Criminal defense lawyer, Joseph Newberger, we appreciate your time and perspective. Thank you.